I came across uh, sound locators and uh, 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 kind of sound mirrors you know, maybe 20 years ago and I was really sort of really struck by them as a sort of these really intriguing complex objects but I guess I was I liked the sort of element of failure about them the element of folly and the, the, the fact that they were very rationally built and they had this really rational intent and then this language of the machine yet they, they had this very romantic this surreal or this quite metaphysical kind of element to them and they sort of had this I guess when I came across it was after and much after lots of cultural events like the 60s obviously and things where, where they'd been appropriated in these uh, really interesting ways by the Beatles in like Sgt Pepper and they feel almost like an inversal of a gun in that they're not there are these they feel like these very um, trackable objects which are about pointing at specific things so they move around an arc like a gun would on a turret but they um, but yet instead of causing kind of irreparable damage they seem to be the reverse of that where they're receiving information so they've got this sense of um, a receptor obviously they're a receptor rather than a rather than a, a transmitter so they there is that so there's just there's this inversal which sort of feels very sort of like almost like a pacifist statement there is this fascination with with uh, the equipment of the past and but with all of these other objects there's this there is this sort of somber sinister element to it where these things actually are these they're weapons of war and they're just weapons of destruction and the sort of misery and the violence and the and the anguish and the terror that exists around these things is kind of palpable and should never be forgotten I suppose with these ones there is this sort of wonderful escapist element to them that they feel like they're I mean they almost could be looking for phantomagoria or, or like uh, ghosts or or the soul or they got this wonderful thing that they're trying to see the invisible and they're trying to detect something that, that they that cannot be seen so there's this sort of romance to them that I think is really really beautiful and I use that in a, a series of works I mean I haven't returned to the subject for a while but we made a a piece in um, 2007, 2006 in uh, Warsaw that was um, part of um, a, a show I did up there. It was a big space trumpet and it took the, all the technology of, of these early sound locators but also with the sound locators weren't completely redundant and they did lead on to acoustic telescopes. So I was given this opportunity to make this suspended piece in, in Unilever House which is just on Blackfriars Bridge and it was my first permanent commission so I was really sort of took on it with like really sort of tried to make the most ambitious piece I could and it's all made of oak but it, and it's suspended from the ceiling but at midday it moves on two axes to a new position and there are these huge trumpets on it which are bent made of curved bent plywood that are all stitched together at the side so it looks like a almost like an old polyphone record player but they're but they're sort of seven meters long and four meters wide each one and the whole thing is nine meters by nine meters by nine meters it's a vast thing and it silently rotates to new positions and there's a spiral staircase in the ceiling that you could in theory sort of walk down to this thing so it's got this sense of being designed around the body and it has this I mean it's quite whimsical in that it's made all made of wood and it's quite romantic and it's a material I've moved away from because I wanted actually things to feel more real and less sort of theatrical but it was but nonetheless it still has this sense that someone could enter into it and operate it I quite enjoy showing artworks that look like machines outside of an art world context and so and I think there's a really different engagement when people uh, see an object which is, has a, a clear function but that function is yet to be deciphered there is a real sort of energy and a sort of um, in t a sort of archaeological intent to try and work out the function from that form whereas I guess when you see an artwork um, there's often a sort of almost a laziness in that you don't need to understand it because it's just an artwork. I guess in terms of the way that this piece is seen, I mean, it is I, for me it's sort of almost really exciting the idea that you would you put this somewhere in a in a junk shop in Brighton or something and put it in the corner and no one knows what it is and that and the level of intrigue around deciphering what it is is probably much higher than than in a museum where you walk past it and you kind of I, mean, I don't know almost it doesn't it doesn't have the same level of kind of kind of excitement in some ways when you have that passionate sort of deci the archaeological decipherment of an object. I make machines very um, rationally and try and make them as, as, uh, as sort of elegantly and as, as well designed as possible so they're not whimsical or kind of Heath Robinson but then they have this so they, they kind of force a kind of th that kind of process of anal anal analysis but then they make things even well. They might make things too much, much slowly than a person can do, or and so they, they end up being very problematic because they're sort of they have all this 
complexity and cost and expense in making them, but yet they sort of defy kind of any logical explanation. I mean, in terms of the changing meaning of an object, that's another thing that's so interesting in that every decade that piece will take on a new resonance as we grow older and new generations emerge and technology changes that the objects remain static, but yet they change so incredibly over time. So there's this, there's this paradox where an object is the same, but yet it's changing. Whereas we're growing old and we're aging, but yet we somehow remain more similar than the objects. Which are. So stasis, paradoxically, is much more kind of in flux than their own bodies which are changing.